Okay, so now we're heading into session six. We've got a vichy swale, which is like a cream soup, which can be served hot or cold. We're gonna do my favorite sweet and sour sauce, so I look forward to smashing that one down a bit later. So for the vichy swale, we need to be careful. It's a very white colored soup. So we've got to control our heat. I've uh, badgered you enough on that one. The butter goes in, just melt that butter lightly. No color on our onions, our leek, okay? None whatsoever, if we have a look here, Cormac, we've got onions, leeks, milk, potatoes, pretty much some garnish later on. So pretty straightforward. Get our onions in now. So you can hear, it's not really, really hot. It's just warm enough to get a bit of heat into that veg. We'll start with the onions. And again, like we did with the tomato and a couple of other those items we cooked earlier, I'm not, well, I'm gonna make sure I just clean the edge of the pot. What happens is it kind of tricks you, sneaks up on you and you look in here and you've got a lot of brown veg um, or a burnt veg on the side of your pot. And particularly for this one, because we're gonna blend it and we want a really nice white finish. We don't want that. Okay. <coughs> Leaks go in. So what I'm thinking when I when I think about soups is when I, get, when I go around and I eat out a fair bit, probably the soups is something, the classic soup on a menu these days, in Perth in particular, you don't really see a classic soup, obviously we just finished summer, but coming into winter you'll, you'll see a few in your little cafes where they have their little, you know, cauldron there, a lovely pumpkin or a carrot soup or something. They'll do those takeaways, but on menus these days you don't really see a lot of soups. So it's something, I mean I love a good soup, and it's always a bit of a one pot wonder. So just be mindful when you're out there, try a soup, try a cafe soup, see what they're like. So we now season, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Softening that veg down, but no color. So probably just go up a little bit here. Okay, so if we look at the method, we've got step one is melt the butter, we've got our veg going in, all done. Uh, next is the chicken stock. So for this one, you have a chicken stock there, ready to go, in it goes. Turn it up uh, for now with our milk. We're gonna get our potatoes in there as well. Mix it around, so I'm not gonna have a taste now. I'll let that come back to the boil then we'll start the next part of the vicious swap. We'll probably look at the sweet and sour. Okay, moving into sweet and sour sauce from session six, we're gonna do, well, it's pretty basic this one again. It's a great sauce. We've got nice pot again, medium sized pot. We've got our pineapple juice, some vinegar and sugar. We might pan down Cormac and see look at that veg that's cut there. And have a look. We've got obviously some tomato ketchup, just like your normal tomato sauce from home, ginger and garlic, some pineapple pieces, arrowroot, We've got some lovely garnish cut carrots, some um, capsicum and some onions. You can notice that they're all pretty much the same size as well. So again, highlighting having that mise en place ready. In actual fact, cooking is pretty easy. We just get our mise en place ready, and for this it's again a one pot wonder. So we're just gonna stir this a little bit. I'm just gonna use my whisk. Warming up that solution in there. I'm also just keeping an eye on that vicious way that we had going. I'm making sure, again, cluster cooking. I'm being productive for my chef. I've got a couple of things going. Now if you're in a kitchen environment and, and you're cooking something, you've been given instruction to do it, if you look at a vicious one and you go, oh, something doesn't look right, it looks very different to what I did last time, you wouldn't just let it go, guys. You go and see your chef, you have a chat to them. Chef, please, when you get a second, come check out my vicious one. That means if there's a problem with it, you can actually get it fixed before it's too late. Okay, so while this is warming up, I'm just gonna use my little microplane here. Got some ginger. I like using the microplane for ginger and garlic. It's nice and fine. You know, sometimes we cut it, we're a bit rushed, and ends up with chunky bits in there. Not a big fan of that. So I like using this. It's always one in my kit. If I do jobs out in Perth, I have a little mini kit, and I've got one of these in there as well. 
So as we've talked, we keep building our toolboxes. We might start off with a little tiny one. It doesn't take long over time. And you don't have to buy the top of the Waza expensive um, tools all the time. Just simple things that you can use smartly. That's the way I do it anyway. Okay, so in goes my garlic and the ginger. Give that a bit of mix. Tomato sauce or tomato ketchup will go in. Just moving that vicious while off there a little bit. So in that goes. Now I really like this sauce. I love it with that little, little bit of colour into it and that will add a nice little bit of colour to us. I'm also watching the sides of the pot to make sure we don't get black bits in there as well. Okay, so we refer back to our um, recipe. It's pretty much now, we just need to thicken it. So we've used some arrowroot in a previous dish. Use the arrowroot again. We know that's going to help us. Because it now has just alleviated an issue for us with gluten-free. We make that slurry. So the other thing that, you know, I'd be trying to research if I were you guys is kitchen terms. What are the, the kitchen hacks, the words that chefs using out there? They'll say, go make me a slurry of corn flour, go make me a slurry of arrowroot. So this needs to come to the boil, which is just done now, before we get the arrowroot in. We just slowly add that in. So what we're doing here, is I don't want to add it all in, I just want to add it slowly, so we can get a feel for how thick it needs to be. So when I'm thinking sweet and sour, I'm thinking maybe a little crumb piece of fish or crumb or battered pork. If I dipped it in there, that would hold, that sauce would stick to it and would hold on there and coat it. It wouldn't just drizzle off. So we've used about 50% of that. Now the trick with what I used to when I was a young, young chef and no one was talking to me, I just look at the recipe and I just dump it all in. And I learned pretty quick that it's not about that because a recipe as we know is a guide. Food, every time you open a bag of flour or use eggs or use veg, it's never gonna be exactly the same. So you've gotta use your feel, you've gotta, you know, we talk about using our senses and we sometimes think it sounds a little bit uh, very chefy to, to say using your senses, but we actually do. We've gotta get a feel for it. What's it being served with? What are we using it for? So I'm thinking Cormac on this one, that might just need a little bit more. It needs to coat for me. Looks about right. Pretty happy with that. It's gonna cook a little bit more. I can potentially, at the end, if I wanted to, add a little bit more arrowroot. It's just come out to the ball now. When it comes to the ball, it's pretty much not gonna thicken anymore. So I would know if that wasn't where it needed to be, that I would have to add a bit more in, okay? So I've added probably 80% of that in now, it's nice. Okay, the rest of the sauce is pretty straightforward, which is gonna allow us um, to look at the vicious one as well. But we'll just get this one done. Okay, we're gonna add the veg, and we're gonna simmer for a few minutes. Carrots and onions are gonna go in for me first. So when they go, they look beautiful, those carrots. Not a big fan of the green capsicum. Personal flavour. <laughs> I don't like it. Anyway, it's going in. In it goes. Looks lovely though, and you've got those nice colours that we always uh, want to be using to make our food look good. So we're not going to be overcooking this. We know with the sweet and sour, it's just going to be like almost al dente this veg by the time we've finished. I'll have a quick taste of that. Ooh, yeah. Love the vinegar. It's probably heavy on the vinegar. So what could we do with that? Do we think if we thought it was a little bit heavy, with one element we could add more pineapple, we could add more sugar. If we did the recipe again, we'd actually take a note on here. So if this was an assessment dish, I might put in here, if it said 300 ml of vinegar, I might write, try 250. And then we might not do this recipe again if we're at home for another six months and there's no way you're gonna remember. So you come back to that recipe and you go, you know what, we'll wait. We'll 
adjust our recipes as we go. So finally, what's going to go in here is our pineapple. Pineapple goes in, we'll give that a few minutes. Then I'm going to come back, I'm going to quickly blend my vicious one and show you that. Well actually before we do that, we'll make, let's actually show everyone this vicious one now. So I'll just switch those over. Again, cluster cooking, multitasking, very important. So we've got our vicious one here, potatoes are nice and soft, it's a good colour, there's no burnt veg floating around at the top of the pot here. We've got a fish with some cream, blend it and I'll show you the two sauces. Okay chef, so I've just blended the uh, vicious one here, now I need to just finish it off. I'm going to add a little bit of cream to that, just fix that. I'm going to put in our cream. So that basically is that soup done. So what we would do for this, obviously if we were having it as a hot soup, we could serve that. If you've got an issue with a blender, there's a couple of things, I mean we've blended it, you don't really need to blend it if you don't want to. Classically you probably would, but you'd also, you could use a, a, an upright blender, it doesn't have to be a stick blender like this one, it could be a multitude of things, as long as we get something at the back end of this looking like a puree of some kind, even an old Nutribullet or something like that would be quite um, good with it. We just serve that, I'm only doing a little dish for you to have a look at, a little bit of garnish on top. So Vichy Swaz is actually served chilled, Chef, isn't that right? Yes, classically it's definitely served chilled. We're kind of covering a few bases with the Vichy Swaz today. We're doing a cream soup, a chilled soup, and what was the third one, Cormac, can you remember? Uh, pure, a puree. Puree soup, correct. Okay, so my lovely veg here, going in. So for me that would be beautiful, some lovely battered fish or pork over top of that. Love it. I think I can smell some rice cooking. Let's go and have a bit of a chow down. 